these emergency, at many of these emergencies, our crews end up retrieving pets who have succumbed to the smoke inside the structure. Unfortunately, our department is, has been very ill-prepared to resuscitate these pets very, very well, if at all. Just last month, we had a structure fire where five dogs perished in the house fire. We were able to save one pet using an oxygen mask made for human beings, for people. It, it worked out okay, but it wasn't a great, great way to do it. The thing is that we all recognize that pets are not just pets. Pets are members of our family. Unfortunately, we as firefighters have seen too many people rush back into burning structures in hopes of saving their pets. Obviously, this is a very dangerous, if not deadly, action that we do not like to see. But as a fellow dog owner myself, I can understand the desire to save your best friend. So after that fire that we had a little while back, we had one of our firefighters, Eric Mork, who I believe is here today or showing up very shortly, who actually went out of his way, did the legwork, uh, went online and found a way of obtaining or requesting oxygen masks specifically made for uh, pets. So today we're here to recognize a wonderful donation to the St. Paul Fire Department. It's a device that will greatly enhance our ability to resuscitate pets that have been rescued from burning homes. And here to tell us more about this valuable tool is Andrea Murray. She's the general manager of Invisible Fence Twin Cities. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Murray and I'm the general manager of Invisible Fence brand Twin Cities. Uh, Invisible Fence is a nationwide company and we service the Twin Cities area. We've been here for about 20 years and we office out of the Egan area. Uh, just wanted to go ahead and introduce the other members here with me today. Uh, first, we have Keith and Michelle Olson. They are the owners of the Twin Cities office. Uh, they have owned this dealership for about 20 years now. Next, we have Melissa Krumholtz. She is our office manager, so she's handling the daily interactions with our customers. Uh, we've got Mary Francis with her dog Celia, and she is one of our pet consultants, so she's actually the one going to the customers' homes and having the interaction with them to figure out what the best solution for them is to keep their pets safe at home. And then finally, we have Greta Kraus with her dog, Target. Uh, Greta is one of our certified pet trainers. She and Mary have both with, been with Invisible Fence for about 20 years now. Uh, and she is also running an organization called uh, Puppy Love Caring Canines. And that is training service dogs for the disabled that need them in their homes. So that's everybody that we've got here today. Um, and we're all here today for really the same mission. And that's to, uh, we're in the business of saving lives and saving pets' lives. And, Really, Project Breathe was something that was uh, made sense for us to do. It's right in line with what we do every day, and that's trying to keep pets safe in their homes. Um, to give a little background on Invisible Fence, we've been around for 40 years. Uh, we go to customers' homes, sit down with them, and figure out what the best solution is for them to keep their pets safe inside and outside of their homes. Uh, there's some things that are out of our control, and there's other hazards that we cannot protect them from, but some things that we can do to try and save their lives should something arise. And that's kind of how Project Breathe came to be. Uh, Project Breathe is a program that Invisible Fence has been involved in and has to date distributed 10,000 kits um, among the U.S. and Canada and so far there's 120 success rates from these being used. When Eric had first contacted us about using or getting the kits for the St. Paul Fire Department, we were very thrilled and it's very much an honor to participate in this and to be able to help out the local community. Uh, like Jim said, you know, pets are our family members and we want to do anything that we can to keep our family members safe. So each kit contains a small, medium, and large mask. These masks are just made for the different size dogs, the different breeds of dogs. The small ones are going to be used for the smaller dogs that are about 20 pounds or less that have a short snout. Um, we've got the medium one that's going to be used for dogs that are anywhere from 20 to 55 pounds. And then we've got the large one that's going to be used for dogs that are 55 pounds and over. So there's a wide variety of them. Um, when we had first talked to Eric, we had talked about the fire that St. Paul had recently had with the six dogs involved, and that five of them unfortunately did not make it, and that was right after we had gotten the request. So it was unfortunate to hear, but at the same time a blessing that we could kind of step in and hopefully prevent that from happening again in the future. So I'm sure Jackie Drassel, which I don't know if she's here today, could probably shed some light on what it was like to try and 
save a dog that was using a human mask uh, versus a pet oxygen mask. Um, so I think we'll just go ahead and lead into a demonstration. We've got uh, Dr. Windsor here. He is from the Invergrove Heights Animal Hospital. He is co-owner. He is a St. Paul native and an active member and president of the Minnesota Veterinary Medical Association. He served as chairman of the board of the River Heights Chamber of Commerce, the Progress Plus Board of Directors, and he's also on the board for the Minnesota Veterinary uh, Medical Foundation. And he was also awarded Veterinarian of the Year in 2010. So if you can please help me welcome Dr. Jim Windsor. This is Max. Max is a wonderful Dalmatian of parts appropriate in a fire station. Uh, the, and the challenge occasionally, a major challenge can be to remove the pets from the structure. Dogs oftentimes will hide in the home instead of trying to get out. And so that's where the fire can, uh, and firefighters with their safety equipment can get in and help get these animals out so don't risk yourself rescuing the pets. Um, certainly then, attitude and comfort of the dog, um, try to restrain them in a very stressful environment. Uh, that oxygen mask, uh, appropriate size, and to just apply over his face. They can also be, if they're appropriate, with Max here, it fits really nicely, could be attached to an ambu bag, and if he weren't breathing on his own, we could assist that with that equipment um, by plugging the CO2 release uh, valves for that. Max and many dogs will tolerate these very comfortably, and it could be a little difference between life and death. Thank you for coming. Um, it's really an honor and a privilege for us to be involved in this donation today. We really feel like the, um, the real heroes are the firemen who go into um, houses and structures to you know, save humans as well as um, do what they can to save, save the pets and hopefully this will provide a tool for them and every hero needs, the, needs tools to help them do their job. So um, we just like to, on behalf of Invisible Fence brand Twin Cities, um, donate 36 oxygen masks which will uh, provide an oxygen mask for every truck in your um, um, in your fire department wonderful thank you thank you very much and yes he came in late but i do want to publicly recognize uh, firefighter eric moore come on up eric he is the one who initiated this program and got it going so on behalf of the saint paul fire department not only do I thank Invisible Defense, but also Eric for his thank work you. on this project as well. I'd like to open it up to questions, if you have any questions of uh, people here from. Hi, I'm Nicole North from the Stars Union. I'm just curious, I have a cat in Max, and I'm just curious, do these masks also work for cats or other pets? Yes, they are pet oxygen masks, so they will work for both. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. They are pet oxygen masks. So they will work for um, cats and dogs, and probably other uh, other animals as well. So the other end of the tube connects to an oxygen tank. Yeah, right? oxygen, or um, as Jim uh, Windsor was saying, possibly a bag too. What's the protocol for firefighters? Is it to go back into the burning building, or is it to? Not the, not the civilian, but our firefighters will go in anyway because we have to go in and put the fire out. We, uh, those thermal imagers that you've been hearing about in the news that uh, we've been using to actually rescue human beings, they will pick up the signature of a missing cat, dog, or something like that because it's basically sensing the heat and all that stuff. So, as, such are the operations of a fire department. Um, so we, you know, it, it's easy for us to s stand here and say, don't go in and get your pets. Um, it's very difficult for us to impress upon them how dangerous that is. We have the tools and equipment to go in safely and rescue the pets and bring them back out. And now with the advent of this, that's going to bring the outcome of that situation, hopefully to a much higher level, uh, more positive level outcome, something like that. Yeah, there's 120 known success stories to date. Um, so at this point, you know, we definitely would love to hear more. There's, like Jim had said, there's between anywhere between 40,000 and 150,000 uh, pets that die annually. And a lot of that is from smoke inhalation. So that's something that we definitely want to reduce that number. And we're hoping that this is a tool that will help do that.
Yeah.